All right, then we can begin as a uh, gentleman begin begin with our prayer this morning. Okay. All right. Let's look to the Lord, Heavenly Father. We come in the precious name of Your Son, Jesus Christ. Just lifting Him up today, Lord. We thank You for this resurrection, Lord, because He arose, Lord. We will rise too, Lord. So we uh -huh. thank you that those of us thank who believe, believe on him will also have a resurrection. So thank you, Lord, for that, Lord. Thank you. It was purchased thank by you. our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the message today, and we pray for the messenger, Lord, that you will yeah. anoint him of the fresh, of the fresh anointing of your spirit, that he will rightly divide yeah. the word of truth. We pray for all the families, all the child church family who are represented here this morning, and those yeah. others who may be listening in, Lord, we lift them up to you, dear Lord. I ask you to then to bless them and bless their households. Lord, we yeah. just thank you for this day, Lord. We know that, Lord, it is, it's you that woke us up this morning. Our eyes can see yeah, a new is. day that we have not seen before. And Lord, we pray Thank this you. day that we will bring honor to you, Lord, because mm -hmm. this is not only because of the resurrection, but just because who you are, you are our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So yeah. thank you for arriving this morning. And we pray, lift up to you, Lord, Sister Doretha Montgomery, Lord. We, Please, Lord we know that she's one of your children, Lord, and you know what's going on with her body, Lord. So we just turn that over to you there, Lord. And yeah. we pray for the family, Lord, that you would just relieve that anxiety, Lord. When our loved ones go down, Lord, we become anxious, but Lord, let's help. Yes. Help the family to lean upon you and yes. your grace and your mercy and yes. your love for yes. us. We just thank you right now, Montgomery, Lord, to one of your sweet, sweet, sweet members, members there, Lord. We thank you for her. We pray for the family, Lord, each and every one of them there, Lord. And we pray for our pastor, Lord. He has a, a even a, a big deal, another relationship beside being her pastor, Lord. He's a, her daughter is married to his son, Lord. So we just pray for our mm -hmm. pastor. That you just guide him and what he needs to be for the family. Give him all that, all that he needs, Lord. We just thank you for this lesson today. We thank you that you left these, these books here for us. So we know, know what you did for us, Lord. And, and you did it out of love, Lord. You loved us so much, Lord, that you would Lord, just send your only begotten yes, son. You would you, come Lord. and take upon our sins, Lord, and go to Calvary's cross and go yes, into the Lord. grave. But Lord, thank on you. that third day, Lord, you did like today, <laughs> you raised him up. With all power in his hands, dear Lord, and we thank yes, you thank for you. the resurrection. We, Lord, we thank you for the life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, today we thank you that we can lift up your name. Let me tell yes. somebody, we serve a risen yes. Savior. Yes. Yes. Not a dead thank Savior, he's you, a risen Lord. Savior, and he's at your right hand, making intercessions for us right now. So Lord, we thank you, and we praise you, and we give all glory and majesty to you. Majesty to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I praise God for this morning and uh, opportunity. I know we're not in person once again, but we're getting there, okay? And uh, just to give you an update on the uh, renovation, uh, painting is starting to, uh, this week, the painting and the floors will be down. And we just got a little back backlog on the um, petitions for the bad women, uh, for the bathrooms, for the stalls. Mm -hmm. A little background that uh, out back, you know, out. Uh, backlog on that and uh, the community, uh, the baptism. Of, uh, oh, uh huh. So um, it's coming along, and um, I'll keep you up. We keep you updated on that, and uh, but things are coming along. We thank the Lord for your prayers mm -hmm. and your support in this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. As you see behind me, <laughs> he is what he is alive. 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 He is risen he is alive and he is risen i want to start out this i want to start out worship today a little bit different today i want to start a little bit different i was now you know you know, you know i know it's coming from matthew mark luke and john right mm -hmm. but let's start out with first corinthians chapter 15 let's start out with first corinthians chapter 15 let me see can i pull that up there for you uh i want you to see something here first corinthians chapter 15 because we need to understand that uh, the, the resurrection is a guarantee that every saint, everyone who has believed as, as it was pray, already prayed, everyone who believed as Jesus has rose, so shall we rise. That is a promise from scripture. That is a promise from scripture. And it is, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the greatest things in history. Even those who don't believe, when they hear of the Christian faith, one thing they know of 
in history is that there was a resurrection. There was a resurrection. They know Jesus is real. They know Jesus was real, but we not need to understand that the resurrection to us as believers means several things as we go into our worship today. Chapter 15 of uh, 1 Corinthians is a the great chapter on the resurrection. And I want you to first look at verse 13. Look at verse 13 first, because we want to see the uh, we want to see the reality. We want to see, we're going to look at the reality of the empty tomb, but we want to see the reality of the resurrection and what it really, what it means to us. And, 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 and verse 13 starts out with, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. If there's no resurrection of the dead, that means Christ is not risen. We don't have a savior. And guess where we are? We're still in our sins. So that's the first thing we need to know. Christ is risen. Because if Christ is not risen, then we are still in our sin. But he rose. He rose. Then verse 14 says, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. What does that mean? If Christ is not risen, then preaching is useless. What are we preaching to people for? What are we telling people about Christ for? Because if he's not risen, then he's dead in the grave, just like one of us, just like we go into the grave. But that would make our preaching in vain. Also, if he is not risen, look at verse 15. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. That makes the apostles liars. That make Paul and all the apostles, that make them liars of what they preach. And you know, all through the book of Acts, when they're preaching, they're preaching about the resurrection. They're preaching about the resurrection. Also in verse 15, it says, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so, be that the dead rise not. We are liars. It's, 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 a, it's a lie. Everything is a lie if Christ has not risen. Look at verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. All he's doing is emphasize. He's emphasizing that. He's reinforcing that, that Christ, if he's not raised, if Christ is still in the grave, then our preaching is vain. The apostles who, who wrote the scriptures, they're liars. And look at verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. What are we believing for? Ye are yet in your sins. Ye are yet in your sins. And verse 18. Then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. That means all our loved ones, those who have gone on our head, believing in Christ Jesus, they are no longer in existence. They have perished. And we know that is not true because to be absent from the body is to be present. Lord. So we know that if Christ is risen, our gospel preaching, if Christ is not risen, our gospel preaching is useless. Our gospel preaching is faithless. Our gospel preachers make, pre I mean, the apostles are liars. Sin had, power has not been broken over us. And everyone who died hoping in Christ is actually damned. And then verse 19 says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable men and women. Takes in men and women. If What is he saying here? If Christ didn't rise from the dead, then Christians are putting their hope in a dead Christ. We're putting our hope in a person who's dead. You can put your hope in, it, in anybody who in the grave. They're dead. But he is alive. If we're putting our hope in a dead Christ, then we are by most people most miserable. But we know better than that, don't we? We know better than that. Christ is risen. And now let's go to our scriptures in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. In the end of the Sabbath, uh, could you all mute? I'm hearing people background. Could you all mute for me? In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene 
and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was lightning, was like lightning, his face and his raiment white as snow. So you know this is a holy angel, okay? And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men, they in a coma. And the angels, and the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, praise the Lord, for he is risen, as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. We see, now a dead savior can't see, can't, can't, can't meet you in Galilee, can't meet them in Galilee, right? So the first thing we wanna see as we look at our notes for today is, first of all, the Lord is risen. Second, the tomb is empty. Third, he is not dead. He is alive. The first thing we look at is the reality of the empty tomb. Empty tomb. What's the reality of the empty tomb? The re reality of the empty tomb, as we look at our scripture, the reality of the empty tomb is that when they get there on the end of the Sabbath, it's important to understand it's the end of the Sabbath. Sabbath comes on the seventh day. It's the end of the Sabbath. And the Jewish, Jewish tradition was they count days by numbers, okay? They count days by number. They don't say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They count days by number. After the seventh day came the first day, and it dawned on the first day of the week. And who comes? The women come, Mary Magdalene and other Marys, and others with her too. And they come to the sepulchre, they come to the grave. And the reality of the empty tomb is that it is empty. How do we know it's empty? First of all, an earthquake angel. Somebody called this the earthquake angel. The, the, the earthquake, greater earthquake didn't come because, because of the resurrection. The earthquake came because the earthquake angel came down and he moved, rolled back the stone. Now, here's a question. Here's a question to ask. Why did he ride back, raise back the stone, raise, roll back the stone? For Jesus to get out? No way for us to see in, for the ladies to see in that the tomb was empty. So that's the reality. The angel rolls back the stone to see, to let, not let Jesus out, but Jesus gone, he gone. And we'll see that very clearly as we look at chapter 19, when we see chapter 19 of John, he walked through doors. With the doors being shut, he goes to his disciples. So the reality of the empty tomb is that Jesus is resurrected. He is gone. The stone is rolled away, not for him to get out, but for us, for the ladies and the world to see in that he's gone. And this is an angel, a holy angel. His, his face is like lightning and his raiment is pure white, let's say pure white. And here's what happened to the keepers. Remember that the Pharisees had asked the pilot to put soldiers at the door. Matter of fact, they had asked him to seal the, seal the tomb up and put soldiers at the door because they said that his disciples said that, that this, that this, that he, they were saying that this deceiver said that he was going to rise on the third day. So they wanted to secure it. So they secured it by a stone in front of the tomb and they secured it by putting Roman soldiers there. But Roman soldiers have no power over the power of God. Roman soldiers have no power over the angels of God. Roman soldiers have no power at all on over the uh, affairs of God or God's, uh, what do you put? God will, okay? So when the angel come, the keepers, that'd be the soldiers, Roman soldiers, they shook, they shook and they became as dead men. When I say they became dead men, they went into a stone coma. It is something, they went into a coma, the ladies didn't. They went into a coma, the ladies didn't. 
The angels come to the lady in God, a sustaining God. He sustains. He sustains his children. He sustains his believers. He sustains his believers. The, the soldiers, they went into a coma. The angels, God, sustained the women and told them to do what? Fear not. Fear not. Why? Because I'm about to show you something. He says, I know you seek Jesus, whom was crucified. I know you seek Jesus who was crucified, but he's not here. He's not here. You see, the angel didn't open up the tomb to let Jesus out. The angels opened the tomb to let the ladies in to see that what? That he is not here. Why? Because he has risen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And all that you can say to just rejoice in our salvation that God has provided for us. The next thing we want to see, but we see the reality of the empty tomb. It is empty. The angels have rolled back the stone so we can clearly see the tomb is empty. Uh, for those who might have been with us uh, Friday for a good uh, Friday service here, here in the seven last words, uh, one of the things that you understood is that when Jesus was on the cross, when Jesus was crucified, he died on the cross. He died on the cross. He didn't go into a coma. He died on the cross. So and you don't bury dead people. I'm saying that because there are people, there's a, 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 a understand there's something out here now that says that maybe Jesus didn't really die on the cross and maybe he went into a coma. And when he went into the coolness of the tomb, that he was revived. Now, come on now. That don't even sound right. He revived from a, 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 a resurrection, a, a crucifixion that from those soldiers who were professionals, we saw very clearly Friday, Jesus died on the cross for they did not break his legs. They did not break his legs. They broke the thieves legs so they could die faster. So they wouldn't be up there for Passover, but they came to Jesus. He was already dead. And what did they do? They thrust a fear in his side and out came blood and water. And that's very important to understand that when the blood and water mix, the blood mixed with the water, that means you are dead. And these soldiers knew very clearly they were professional executioners and they knew that he was dead. If they didn't think that he was dead or know that, they, that, that he was dead, they would have broke his leg. But it was fulfilling scripture, not a bone of the perfect lamb of God was broken. I'm sharing all that to share with you that he was dead and he has now risen. They laid him in the grave and he is now risen. The thanks thing, the next thing we need to understand is we want to see the response to the empty tomb. How do people respond to an empty tomb? Do you know that there are people, many people who don't believe in the resurrection? There are people who don't believe in the resurrection. There are people who believe uh, they're naturalists who don't believe anything miracle could happen. Uh, there are people who, you know, there are people who are very angry about the resurrection. And they go out to prove against the believers that there is no resurrection. And so you got those who are unbelieving that are trying to disprove the revelation, the rev um, resurrection. But what is the response of those who have faith? See, the resurrection, to understand the resurrection is a faith walk. To understand the resurrection is a faith walk. And I want to take us to understand the response. When we look at verse 28, chapter 28, verse 7. Verse 7 says, and go quickly. The angel is announcing, he's announcing, he's telling the uh, women to go quick, go and tell his disciples. He said, go quickly and tell your disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before the, into Galilee. There shall ye see him. I have told you. Look at their response. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher or the grave with fear and great joy. Fear and great joy. I can have fear and joy at the same time. Fear because they didn't quite understand. They didn't, you know, they didn't believe in the right. They didn't understand the resurrection at this time. Why were they going to the tomb? They were going to the tomb to dress the body of Jesus with ointments, with different perfumes and ointment. They had not yet believed in the resurrection yet or understood the resurrection yet. They were going to uh, anoint a dead body before the, uh, before the fourth day. There was a tradition in um, Jewish, uh, this is a tradition that you can read up on it 
in a, in a Jewish um, tradition that says, if a body, a person was dead for four days, then the spirit, because of the decay of the body, would leave the spirit, would leave it totally. So it could be that they wanted to get there before that fourth day so they could do their last uh, sympathetic uh, 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 deed to the Lord that they love. And you know, there was all, Joseph Arimathea and Nicodemus had already provided some ointments and perfume for the body. Because you know they didn't embalm. Jews did not embalm. Jewish people did not embalm, and but they wrapped the body in cloth, which was uh, filled with perfumes and aromatic uh, perfumes that would keep the body until they bury it. So they went there to 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 actually anoint uh, to uh, put perfume and to anoint the body with perfumes and all. So they did not know. They didn't. They didn't really realize the resurrection yet. But look what they did. They ran with joy, fear, and joy. Fear because they didn't quite understand, but joy because they know something is happening. And the just joy that the Lord puts in the heart, you can't take it away, even in the midst of the fear. And they did run to bring his disciples' word. And look at. Um, Look at the next verse there. As they're going, then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee. There shall they see me. Jesus meet them on the way. I didn't want to skip over this verse. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. He's alive. He says, all hail. You know what that, you know what that, that word means? Jesus said, good morning. Hi. Isn't that something? Our Lord is our personal Savior. Our Lord is showing that he is our personal Savior. And he says, good morning. Oh, hi to them. And they came and held him by the feet. And look what they did. They worshiped him. Don't tell me Jesus ain't who he said he is. Don't tell me Jesus is not. Uh, uh, the God, the Son, and to be worshipped just as we worship the Father and the Holy Spirit, for they all are one. So they, the response to the empty tomb is fear, joy, and when they see the Lord, worship, because the tomb is empty. What's our next point we need to see here? What's our next point we need to see here? The reality of the empty tomb, it is it because why? Because Christ has risen. The angel very much announced it. What is the response? Fear, joy, and when they see Jesus, worship. Now, let's look at the risen Lord. Look at the risen Lord of the empty tomb. Let's drop down to verse 28 and verse 18 of chapter 28. We're going to look at those other verses. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus came and spake unto them. But verse 17 says, and when they saw him, once again, their response was worship. They worship him. But some doubted. See, they still didn't understand the resurrection quite yet. But when he is glorified, when he is ascended, they will understand. When the spirit of God has come, they will understand. As we look at the other scriptures, I had the other scriptures up to you. Look at Mark, Mark's gospel. Mark is uh, sort of in line with, uh, in, in, no, no, no one thing that all four gospels cover the resurrection. All four gospels cover the resurrection. And we know that it is the pinnacle or the central point of our salvation. No resurrection, no salvation. Because if dead, Christ is not risen, then we are still dead in our sins. Mark sort of covers the same thing. He says so on the Sabbath had passed, the Sabbath had passed, and it came on the first day. It came on the first day of the week. You see that in verse two at the morning. And they said among themselves, you know, who will roll the stone away? Think about these ladies. These ladies have much faith. Uh, they, they, have, they have much faith. You know, it might be fear, but they have much faith. Uh, they know there's a stone there, 
And they just go on knowing and believing that there's somebody going to remove that stone away. And God hears their prayer. And of course, we see in Matthew, he moves it away. And it says, and when they looked, they saw the stone was gone. They, they had faith and they knew. They were frightened, but he said, remember the angel said, you seek Jesus. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where he lay. And in this, you also have the response again. Now, when Jesus was risen early that first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. What happened? How Mary going to respond? Mary Magdalene is the one who it says in the scripture that Jesus cast out seven devils out of her. You know she's got to love the Lord. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourn and wept. And they, when they had heard they, that he was alive and had been seen of her, they didn't believe. There you go again. See, I'm not just making this up. They didn't believe yet. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked. And that's in Luke. We're going to look at Luke in just a minute. We're going to look at Luke, okay? And they went and told it unto the residue, the rest of the feet, rest of the brethren. Neither believed they them. Nobody was believing. Nobody was believing in the resurrection. Nobody is believing because they don't understand. It's beyond our comprehension, around our minds to understand the resurrection. Look at Luke now. Remember all three gospel covered? All three cops were covered. Look at Luke. Now, on the first day of the week, always on the first day of the week, now you know why we celebrate on the first day of the week. It's Resurrection Day. It commemorates the resurrection of our Lord. Luke goes somewhat of the same uh, uh, account of Mary Magdalene and other ladies going to the tomb. And when they go to tell the disciples, they think that they're talking like idol women. They, they, they do not believe. I'm showing you all this because I want you to understand that the scripture is very clear. They don't believe. But Peter arose. Remember Peter, good old Peter. He arose and he goes into the sepulcher and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves. It's as if someone got up, rose skin from the dead. Someone rose up and just folded the linen clothes up. Yes, he did. Our Lord did. And he departed, wandering in himself at that which was come to pass. See, he still didn't understand. But what I want you to understand is we're still looking at, between looking at the response and the risen Lord, we're looking at the response of those who are in contact with the risen Lord. Now, you have to understand one thing. The Lord, when he rose, they didn't understand. They didn't. They didn't uh, really know him when they came to him. They didn't know. They didn't know him. So when he, when we get to Luke here, he comes upon the two that is spoke about in Mark. Spoke about in Mark, and behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. That's about uh, sixty. 60 furlongs, six, three times two, that's about 60 furlongs. And they talk together of all these things which had happened. What had happened? Jesus had been crucified. They had seen him walk, they walked and did marvelous miracles. He had been crucified. Look what they say. And it came to pass that while they communed together, as they were talking, and reasoned, they don't understand yet. They don't believe it. They haven't, they haven't got a grasp on the revelation yet, the resurrection yet. They haven't got a, a foggiest idea of what the resurrection is yet. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. He drew near and went with them. Why didn't they say, Jesus, is that you? Because they don't understand, they don't see him. He's in his glorified form, and he has to open the eyes of anybody who needs, who wants to who will believe and see who he is. You know that happens today? You know, Jesus had to open our eyes. We didn't just come to Jesus on our own. He has to open our eyes. Remember Mark, Matthew chapter um, 11 at near the end of the chapter? It says, in whom, Jesus says, in whom I will reveal him to. 
the father too, Jesus had to reveal. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. What it means, their eyes were holding. He was in his glorified form and they he, their eyes were holding until he revealed himself to them. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Now, you know very clearly, they don't know who Jesus is. We say it, see it in scripture and we see as Jesus talked with them, they're not saying, oh, Jesus, we're glad to see you. They don't know who he is yet. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger? See, they don't know who he is. They think he's a stranger in Jerusalem and had not known the things which are come to pass there, is, there in these days. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deeds. Remember, they saw the deeds and word before God and all people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. Remember, the Romans killed him, but the people who delivered him, the chief priests, the Jewish priests, delivered him to death and had him crucified. But we trusted. You know what they're saying here in verse 21? We just thought, we thought really that he was the really the one. We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women, also our company, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. See, they didn't believe. They did not yet believe in the resurrection. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found even so as the women have said, but him they saw not. See, they didn't understand the resurrection. They didn't believe in the resurrection as of yet. They didn't believe in the resurrection yet. They were looking for a dead savior in a tomb, not realizing that he was going to rise. And he had told us, Jesus our Lord had told him on several occasions that I must be put to death, but on the third day, I will rise again. And look what Jesus says to them. This is the risen Lord of the empty tomb. Look what he says to them. Oh, fools, and he not did. This is not derogatory. Oh, you oh, fool, oh, fools, or when he says ignorant, you who are uninformed, you who are not informed, or uninformed. He not calling them fools like a derogative thing. You who are uninformed and slow of heart, uninformed. You know your scripture, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. In other words, we're saying you don't believe the scriptures, that all the scriptures that you have and you don't believe it. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And look at this. See why this Old Testament and New Testament must be studied and read together. You can't neglect one or the other. People like to say, I don't want to read the Old Testament. I can't read through it. It's, not, it's too cumbersome to it. No, you need to go through the cumbersomeness of it and read it and understand it. Because what did Jesus do? What did the risen Lord of the empty tomb do? As he met with these two on the road to Emmaus, he began at Moses, that's Old Testament, and the prophets, and all the prophets, that's Old Testament. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning who? Himself, concerning himself. He probably went through Psalm 22. He probably went, well, it wasn't Psalm 22 at the time. We know it's Psalm 22 about the resurrection, what he would say on, on uh, my God, my God, why thou forsaken. He probably went through all those scriptures that talked about his crucifixion, his resurrection. And as he went through all those scriptures, you see, now, now, those of us who have been neglecting the Old Testament, it's time for us to get in it, get with it, okay? But Jesus used it, beginning with Moses, all the way to the prophet, to expound, to show them the thing concerning him. And what was concerning him? His resurrection and his crucifixion and his resurrection. As they got near to the village, look at this. 
the risen Lord is talking with them. They don't know who he is yet. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him. They stopped him. They said, come, come. They said, don't stop. Come on further with us, saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. He went with them. And he came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. He is where they know who he is now. And their eyes were open. Who opened their eyes? He did. The Lord, the Lord of glory, opened their eyes and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. That's, that's a verse that what you want to say. No, he vanished out of their sight. The Lord is ministering to his people. He opened their eyes and now they knew he, who he was. And you know, a lot of people say this verse right here. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? Who talked with them? The risen Lord of the empty tomb. And while he opened to us the scriptures. What scriptures did he open up? He didn't have a new King James, but had the Old Testament and New Testament. He had, he opened to them the Old Testament, which talks about and spells out very clearly who Jesus is, who the Messiah is, and the Messiah of the Old Testament is none other than Jesus. No one else can fit the, 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 uh, the, the prophecies of the scripture but Jesus. And look what happened. They rise up and they go to tell, they return to Jerusalem, they're going to tell the 11. And you know, it's 11, but by the time they get there, uh, you, when Jesus comes to meet with them, only 10 there because Thomas is not with them. And they say unto them, the Lord is risen indeed. That's a saying that you might hear sometimes, the Lord is risen. And then somebody respond, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way. They told them all about what happened. And, and as they did speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. The risen Lord said, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted. Don't you know it? They had not yet believed in the resurrection. And suppose that they had seen a ghost, a spirit or a ghost. And just to show that this is a physical resurrection. Never let anybody tell you. Never let anybody tell you that this was some kind of phantom resurrection or some kind of uh, a spiritual resurrection. This was a bodily resurrection physical resurrection. As he lives, so shall we live. So there's a fright, they're frightened, they're terrified. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Don't God know every thought in our hearts? He knows what we're thinking right now. He knows every bit of, he knows the thought before we even think it. He know that they are frightened, and afraid because they think he's a ghost and they have not yet believed in the resurrection. So he want to show him as the risen Lord as being the physical bodily resurrection. He said, behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me, touch me and see me for a spirit, a ghost has not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, when he talked to them about what he told, showed them, he showed them his hands and his feet. I tell you, I think, I believe when we see our Lord, the things that we're gonna see, we're gonna see his pierced hands, his pierced feet. We're gonna see that pierced side with his fist in the side, knowing that he is our risen Lord of glory who has saved us from our sins. He goes on further. And they, and he says to them, and while they yet believe not for joy, they had joy, but they still didn't believe and wonder. He said unto them, have ye anything, any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you all things must be fulfilled, 
which were written in the law of Moses. There's the Old Testament again, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, there you go, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. In order for anybody to understand who Jesus is, he has to open their eyes. And it's a faith that we need to place in Christ Jesus. And he will open our eyes. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooves Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Rise from the dead the third day. And this is, once again, he gives them the commission. Uh, he gives them the commission and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. That's why we've been studying the book of Acts. We see it preached. So the risen Lord, he's alive. He's physical, risen. is a physical bodily resurrection. And we need to understand that we cannot let those who don't believe uh, uh, come to us and say that there is there was no resurrection because the importance of the resurrection is, I'm going to give you six things as we prepare to close our celebration of the resurrection. Before I give you these six things, you understand the reality of the tomb, right? I'm trying to take you back to the, to the outline here. You understand the reality of the empty tomb. It's empty. Jesus is gone. The stone will roll away for us to see in, to see that he has risen from the dead indeed. The response to the empty tomb, even though it was fearful response and frightened response, it was worshiping and realizing that Christ is Lord. And the risen Lord of the empty tomb, he shows himself not only to the two at Adamaeus, he goes to the disciples in chapter 19 of John. He shows himself as he goes while the door was closed and he shows Thomas. Thomas wasn't there the first time, but as he comes the second time and Thomas, he tells Thomas, see my hands, see my side. And Thomas says very clearly, my Lord, my God, and my, my Lord, and my God. Six things you need to understand as we close out our worship today. Six things. The, resur the importance of the resurrection is, first of all, it is giving us that the word of God is true, showing us that the word of God is true. Jesus said it over and over again, I will rise, I will rise, I will rise. On the third day, I will rise. That indicates and shows us that the word of God is true. Number one. Got that down. The resurrection is important. The importance of resurrection is because Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the one who would come to save us from our sins. He, as God, has power over sin. How do we know he has power, he has power over sin? When he died for our sins on the cross, when he died for our sins on the cross, on the third day he rose again. He is the Messiah. He is God the Son. Thirdly, the resurrection is important because it completes our salvation. It completes our salvation. Salvation is complete in the resurrection. Because of the resurrection, we are victors. We have victory. We have victory. We can't sing that song, Victory in Jesus, if there is no resurrection. Fourthly, the resurrection is important and must be, is of utmost important and must be understood because the church is now established. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 16, upon this rock, I will build my church. What did Peter say? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Matthew 16. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades. Death cannot kill believers. You know that, right? Death will not kill his church. And Jesus said, I'm established my church and death can't kill it. The resurrection is the proof of the establishment of the church. The church cannot be killed. Fifthly, the resurrection is important. Why? Because the judge is coming. The judge is coming. I ain't talking about Judge Judy. I'm talking about the judge, the true judge. The judge 
the Lord Jesus Christ, he is coming. He is coming. The judge is alive and he's on his way. John chapter five, jot down John chapter five. Jesus said in John chapter five at one point, God had given all authority in his hand to judge. John chapter five, read that clearly. So the judge is coming. That's number five. The sixty, the last thing that we need to understand. One of the things we need to understand about the importance of the resurrection is that it proves this. Heaven is waiting for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Remember John 14? Verse one says, if you believe in God, you believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. And if what I saw, I would have told you. I go to do what? To prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So what those six things again? Kind of you write it down. The sixth thing, the resurrection, the resurrection, the utmost importance of the resurrection is that it, it shows that God's word is true. God's word is true. It shows that God, Christ is the true son of God, the true Messiah, the one who, only one who has power over death. It shows, number three, it shows that salvation is complete. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, it was finished. It was stamped in full and complete. And as one of the ministers said, it ain't over. It wasn't over because he rose on the third day. And fourthly, the resurrection proved and established that the church has been is, is being established by the Lord. Fifthly, is the judge is coming. There is judgment coming. For people who want to, people who scoff and at, at the cross and at the resurrection, let them know that judgment is coming. And the one who's going to be judging is the one who rose again after he died on the cross. And sixthly, heaven is waiting. You can tell them, I have a home. This is not my home. My home is in heaven where my Lord is. And he is uh, preparing it. And it's awaiting for me. So aren't you glad of the resurrection of our Lord? Aren't you glad that Jesus is not in the grave, but he has risen again? As we close, just want to show you um, because I did show you, I don't want to be amiss and not show you John's gospel. How John, same way, John, the first day of the week, first day of the week, and chapter 20. And John goes through it about saying he's, he's all the accounts are uh, somewhat different, but all harmonizing together to let us know that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is real. And remember, I repeat again, it's a bodily resurrection, not a phantom, not a spiritual resurrection. It's a bodily resurrection. So as he was raised from the dead, so shall we be raised from the dead. So the graves where our loved ones are, have gone on, and where we may be before the Lord comes, are our resting place until he raised those bodies up again. But in the meanwhile, our spirits are with the Lord. To be absent from the Lord is to be present, is to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And here it is. They, verse nine shows you very clearly, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Okay? So what we need to understand is that Jesus is risen and that he is the Lord of glory and he's coming back. He's coming back again. And I just wanted to show you a little bit of 19 before we close, a little bit of chapter 19, just to show you. Jesus comes in, Jesus um, comes into his disciples. Did I have the right chapter here? Let me see, it might be. No, it was chapter 20. I had chapter, chapter 20 was right. I had chapter 20 right. But when Jesus coming into his disciples, just to show you, let's just see a little bit. Okay. This is what I wanted to show you. When Jesus first come into the disciples, Thomas is not with them. When he first come in, Thomas is not with them. But Thomas, one of the 12, 
called Didymus, was not with them when this is chapter 20 of John, when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the prince of the nails and put my fingers into the prince of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. You see what Thomas is saying? He had belief. And the eighth day, on a, on a, eight days later, Jesus come back in. And it's very important. This, this, this is very important. The door being shut. I glorify body. We don't need no doors. Doors being shut. He stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas. Remember, Thomas wasn't there when he first came. But Jesus, our Lord, knows that all things. He said, reach hither thy fingers and behold thy hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And he said to him, not be not faith, be not faithless, but believe in. I believe Thomas believes. I believe, believe. He said, my Lord and my God, all those, both those titles that are the titles of God. Those are the titles of God. He says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And this is why I want you, to, this is the close, this is a good closing scripture right here. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Wow, and many signs he gave unto them. And the scripture, John says very clearly, all these things are done, written that, that ye might believe that Jesus is who? The Christ, the anointed one, the son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. We will end just like that. Remember, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Tom and Jesus says to him, you saw and you believe, but blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Hey, I believe that's those of us who have come to Jesus Christ. We have not seen the risen Lord, but we believe because he has opened our eyes. He has opened our eyes, hasn't he? He has opened our eyes that we can see. And I, I rejoice, you know, you know, that this is, I gotta, I gotta show you one more scripture before we go to let you know that Jesus is the one who opened eyes. Never, uh, you know, I had to go, I gotta go to the, I gotta go to Matthew. I gotta go to Matthew chapter 11, just before we leave, okay? I got to go to Matthew chapter 11. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11, just for a minute. Matthew chapter 11, just to show you that, that it's Jesus who opened up the eyes. And if you believe in Christ, you need to praise God for what he has done in you, in you, through you, and for you in bringing you to the understanding of who he is because we serve the risen Lord. He is real. Now, we're familiar with this verse, right? We're familiar with uh, verse 28, right? Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We quote that a lot. I think a lot of us know that. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, praise God. But look at, look, look at the verses come before that. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank God. I thank, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them unto babes. He revealed them unto us, babes. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. All things, this is what I want you to see, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. You know what he's saying there? Nobody knows the Son, knows the, uh, uh, son nobody knows the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. God only knows him. He, he's, but look what he says. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. How about that? Jesus, if you know Jesus today as your Lord and your savior, he is the one who has revealed himself to you. 
And we need to praise God on this resurrection celebration Sunday that he has done just what he said. He said in John, Romans chapter Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, what it said, thou shalt be saved. But with the what? Heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is praising God time. We are celebrating the risen Lord. And I'm so glad to have so many of you all with us celebrating the risen Lord, our Savior. And that's our worship lesson.